Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to Cheltenham with just 13 days to go uh, before the 2020 Cheltenham Festival. Um, as you can see, the, the course looks in fantastic nick. The excitement's ramping up now. Uh, there's going to be 250,000 people through the gates, 4.6 million in prize money on offer, uh, and some incredible horses that we can look forward to seeing in action here uh, in just under a fortnight's time. Uh, we've got a number of trainers here in the room. Thank you very much uh, to all of those that have turned up. Thank you to all the press that have come. Uh, we will rattle through the interviews, and the man we're going to speak to first has got a busy time on his hands. It's Ian Renton. Please put your hands together for Ian from Cheltenham. <laughs> Ian, good to see you. How are you? I'm in great shape, thanks. Um, looking ahead to the festival presented by, uh, by Magnus, uh, what have we got in store? Uh, we've got a few changes this year. We've got some great new sponsors. It's wonderful to welcome Paddy Power back into the fold of the Stairs Hurdle. Uh, we've got Northern Trust, uh, Dalesford, and sort of Place Brothers changing the race to sponsor the Mayor's Race this year. So we, we've, we've got some interesting new sponsors here. <coughs> now, driving in, I've noticed a Ferris Ferris wheel, what other changes have you made? We always like to ring a few changes here. I mean, last year we brought in the Orchard, which was uh, something for uh, luxury brands to kind of display their wares. And it's great to have some new partners down there in the form of Holland, and Holland, and Holland to add to the likes of Bentley and Poodles. So that's what we did last year. This year we got something called the Park. Uh, which is an area, uh, an additional area of entertainment, so people can go down there, uh, plenty of different food outlets, drinks outlets, a um, bit of music, to just enjoy things uh, for those who occasionally are taking a break from the racing. And where exactly is that? It's, uh, well, you can see the Ferris wheel over there, so there's Ferris wheel, there's a carousel, and there'll just be a, a bit of fun for some people down there. I mentioned the quality of horses. Tiger Roll going for a remarkable fifth win at the festival. You've got Paisley Park. The, the horses from the Golden Hour are, are back again from last year. And the Gold Cup and Champion Chase are shaping up to be terrific races. The, fe the festival very rarely disappoints in terms of quality, but how much are you looking forward to this year's festival? Really looking forward to it this year. I mean, I think for those of us who were out in Ireland last, last week, it was brilliant sort of going and visiting uh, Gordon Elliott and William Mullins, seeing the horse special there, which will probably account for sort of quarter of the horses racing here over the four days. But, you know, when you're coming coming up with those horses, you see Shaq and Poussoir, uh, Delta Work and Tiger Roll and the likes. I mean, it, it brings everything closer to home. Uh, so, that, so that was a brilliant treat to sort of see the horses up close. And I do think it's going to be one of the great festivals. You know, you mentioned the uh, Betway Green Mother Champion Chase. I mean, that is a looking to be one of the great champion chases we've seen. And the Glen Farkless Cross Country. I mean, the Wednesday looks like it could be everything. Uh, hopefully the Thursday will be again as well. Uh, we can't wait for it. I do have to touch on the front page uh, of the Racing Post with regards to coronavirus. How is this going to affect the festival? Well, obviously, uh, the racing industry is in close touch with uh, the government. And yeah, at the moment, the government are doing a brilliant job in sort of restricting any issues in this country. Uh, I'm sure that will continue. We really look forward to the festival in two weeks' time. So the festival is going ahead? Absolutely. Good stuff. That's great news. Ian, thank you very much. Um, place, and then they will be sitting around for what is a terrific lunch in a few moments. Simon, please welcome to the stage Simon Place, uh, who, like Ian, is a very busy man. When you look outside at the moment, there's a bit of sun poking through. Happy with that? Yeah, very happy with it, actually. Um, we had a bit of snow last night, and Nigel's already said to me that perhaps my uh, forecaster ex is exaggerating things a little because he's talking about a bit of uh, snow this evening and into tomorrow, but um, we'll take that okay. Considering what we've been through this season, uh, soft and heavy ground ever since October Saturday, of course, we disappointingly lost the uh, Friday in November, but um, I'm, I'm very happy with the way things are. Uh, any of you who want to have a wander around later, you're most welcome. Uh, and the forecast isn't actually too troubling. I've got it in my hand here. Shall we go straight into that? Please do, yeah. Um, so it does continue wet and unsettled and windy, but nothing that we haven't seen before. Uh, the total rain in the forecast that I have, which is up until Saturday week, is actually less than we had in the 24 hours before the November meeting when we then lost the Friday. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with the way things are looking uh, beyond Saturday week, and that's a long way off for any forecaster to, to predict with any accuracy. Uh, he's suggesting it might become a little bit milder. So currently, uh, if I gave a ground assessment today, chase and hurdle courses, both of them I'd describe as soft. Uh, if you look hard enough, you'll find a little bit of good to soft out there, uh, and possibly where the old and new courses intersect, uh, verging on heavy, but only a really small amount. Cross country, uh, some, some of you have had horses up here schooling in the last week or so. Uh, we'd have to call that soft, heavy in places, but that's only around the top loop. 
Uh, given the forecast over the next uh, 10 days or so, what do you expect the going to be come the, come the Tuesday? Well, call it good to soft, won't we? We always do. Um, <laughs> looking at things now, I, 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 I'd be putting my money, I'm not a gambling man, but I'd be putting it on soft ground. But uh, let's just remember, I don't know which year it was, uh, but we kicked off the meeting on soft ground, and come the Friday afternoon, it was quick enough good. So, it, you know, it can go very quickly. The, the thing that's been another characteristic of this winter, as well as lots of rain, is it hasn't really been very cold. Um, I've actually cut my grass at home twice, and, and we've been out there uh, this week cutting the grass again. So the grass is moving. So those temperatures go up. Uh, it could dry out very quickly uh, the week of the festival. Given the, the conditions you've had this year, how easy has it been to prepare the course for the festival <laughs> this time round? Well, we, we, we've used the same method of making sure that the ground is as good as it can be for uh, 10 days' time. In the, everything that we're racing on, bar where the old and new courses cross, uh, we haven't set foot on since March. So all that saved ground on the inside is, is in terrific nick, and so we're really happy with that. Uh, we, we spoke with Ian about some of the, the stars currently in training that we can see uh, in action during the, the, the week, but there's also some returning heroes to Cheltenham, which is terrific, part of the retraining of racehorses scheme. Yeah, we've got the customary ROR parade at half past 12 on the Tuesday uh, with Masterminded and Cue Card. Uh, and then on the Wednesday, Sprinter's going to join the runners for the Queen Mother and lead them out onto the course. Uh, so it'd be great to see him back here four years after he last won the race. That's amazing. Can't wait to see him back. Simon, thank you very much. Uh, as always, Simon will stick around for questions. Let's get into uh, the trainers now. And first up, could I invite Philip Hobbs to join me on stage? Um, Philip, of course. Uh, multiple festival winning trainer with a uh, brilliant team uh, coming to Cheltenham in 13 days time. Philip, how are you? How is the, uh, how is the feeling in the yard at the moment? Oh uh, yeah, all's gone well up to this stage, so we've got a couple more weeks to go to hopefully get one, one, one piece for the last bit. A nervy few weeks ahead? A what? A nervy few weeks ahead? or oh, Two weeks, yeah. So um, yeah, of course it is, but I mean at the end of the day most of the work's now done and it's just a matter of ticking over before. They come here. Sprinter's going to be leading out the runners in the champion chase. Steffi Desoy taking on Shaq and Boursois taking on Altior. That is, I'm sure we'll all agree, one of the races of, of the festival. How is Steffi? Yeah, very good. Everything's uh, gone very well since he won an Ascus, and um, so we're looking forward to today. Uh, I've, I've been on a few previews. I, I was speaking to Nicky Henderson and JP McManus, etc., uh, over the last few days. They can't wait for the clash. Are you really looking forward, uh, like us racing fans, to that matchup? Uh, well, personally, I'd rather also in Shackham if I didn't get there. That'd be much easier. Wouldn't it? So, <laughs> but um, look, if, if, if they're all there and he can win, that'd be great. And was it, is it an easy decision to run him in this race? Well, I think having gone two miles all season, you know, and having been unbeaten, it's the obvious race to go for, isn't it? I mean, I must say, when you look at the Ryanair, you think it might be a little bit easier, but they will. <laughs> Who are you more wary of, Altior or Shackham Portsmouth? Both, I don't know. No idea. No idea. We'll worry about any other time. You've got to beat them all. Well, great to hear he's in good nick. Time Hill, has a decision been made on where he's going to run? No, like a lot of horses. I mean, look, um, you know, we're a long way away. As Simon said, you know, we don't know what the ground's going to be, do we? So we don't know what the runners are going to be, what the entries are. So uh, I'd, if you had to guess, he'd probably be more likely to run in the Arbor Bar as over three miles. It looks a bit easier race. And I'm sure the three miles are suiting. But if, if the ground was... Um, very, very soft, and the other race cut up, then he might go the Ballymore instead. And Sporting John? More likely the Ballymore, but he is in the Sprint Knobs Hurdle as well. Okay. Um, what of the, the handicappers? Can you just pick out a few handicappers that you're looking forward to running at the festival? Um, I pile on has won, he's only had three runs over hurdles, and he's won the last two very easily, which admittedly were very moderate affairs, but he won easily. His first run was maybe his best when he was fourth here in a good novice hurdle in the, in the autumn. So he'll probably run in the Martin Pipe, I'd imagine. Um, Am I right in thinking that Martin St. Quinton owns half with Tim yeah, Sider, is that right? That's absolutely right, yeah, he does, yeah. So good to get him a winner. Well, that would be just the job for the chairman, wouldn't it? It'd be marvellous, <laughs> yeah. Um, Jasper Louis will uh, all be all right running the protest final with his owner, David Maxwell, riding him. So he should hopefully have a decent chance. Uh, Dai Saba in the Kim Muir, he, he, he'd be an obvious one. Uh, maybe Zoffy in the um, Fred Winter, he, he's won his last one very easy at Doncaster. So um, those would be our sort of main ones for the handicaps. Maybe Dice Abba in the Kimio. Uh, and how, how would, just a, a sort of general question to close it, how are the team feeling going into the festival this time around than the 12 months ago? Because on paper you, you've listed a number of horses seemingly with, with really live chances. 
Yeah, I'd hope so. I mean, like all these handicaps, you know, the favourite's going to be sort of five or six to one. So it isn't like you're a good thing or anything, is it? So, but um, nevertheless, though, yes, we've realistically got a lot better chances. So, uh, but I definitely suffer for one winner now. Good man. Good luck um, with all your runners next uh, in in a couple of weeks' time. Thank you, Philip. Thank you, Roger. Can I get Nigel Clifton Davis to join me? Um, Nigel, of course, the trainer of Bristol for May in the Gold Cup amongst others. Bally Andy in the Champion Hurdle, a wide open Champion Hurdle. He's got his notes in his hand, which is good to see. Nigel, how are you? Very good, thank you. Yeah. Good, good. Um, let's start with Bristol May, if we can. How is he? Yeah, grateful. Grateful. Happy with the conditions update there from Simon with regards to his chances? Yeah, that'll be fine for him, yeah. <laughs> After he, he, he's run this season, uh, people within the Twist and Davis camp say he's a forgotten horse. Do you, do you think he is very underestimated by bookmakers and, and backers of horses in that race? Uh, well, I'm just uh, you know, amazed at... Um, Sand, what's it called? Sant um, Santini. Santini. <laughs> Favourite for the Gold Cup. Check the notes, Nigel. Yeah. <laughs> we were giving him two pounds, and we looked all over the winner at the bottom of the hill. He uh, slipped on landing and cost him the race. And uh, he's 33 to 1, and Santini's favourite. But, uh, you know, I think we've got a very good chance. Again, do you have a sort of similar feeling about the position of Ballyandy in the market in the champion hurdle, given what he's achieved this year? Well, again, he's run against Pentland, Pentland Hills twice, and he's beaten them twice. Um, he loves Cheltenham. He, you know, he'll run better than his price suggests, I imagine. Uh, what about the uh, the handicaps? What, what have you got in the handicaps? Um, you got a number in the old team, I Yes, we, we, we got quite a lot. El Cogri, who does very well around here. Um, you know, but they're all sort of 25s, 33s to 1s. So, but you know, just a bit of luck, they can all win. Can you give us, in your opinion, the best chance of a winner for the Twiston Davis team? Um, well, probably Riders of the Storm in the in the um, um, Ryanair. Mm. You know, he's come out of his race really well and um, seems to be improving every run. He's been terrific for you this year, hasn't he? He has been lovely. Was Willie involved in in bringing him over? No, no. The, the owners found him. Willie had him pre-training and that sort of thing. Right. I keep seeing him tweeting about it, taking credit for it. But um, <laughs> that's Willie. Um, listen, fantastic to get an update on those horses. Thank you very much and best of luck with them. Thank you. trainers to get through, so I'm going to uh, rattle through. Next up, uh, Ollie Murphy. Can we get Ollie to the stage? Ollie's got uh, Brewing Up a Storm in the Ark, Litchie Feet in the Marsh, Scandyberg in the Pretemps, three in the Martin Pipe, including Strong Glance. We'll go through a few of these now. Uh, good to see you. Uh, day one, race two, the Arkle. Is Brewing Up a Storm your best chance of a winner, do you think? I thought so. Um, I don't think he's done a lot wrong. Um, I know we haven't seen him for a while, but he's he's very good fresh as well. Um, obviously, the Irish look like they've a, they've a fairly strong hand in the race, but uh, my lads um, my lads done nothing wrong, and yeah, we're looking forward to running him. Uh, how is he going into the into the uh, into the festival? Yeah, no, he's in he's in good form. Um, as I've always stated, he's very good fresh. He won his his bumper novice hurdle and novice chase first time out, so uh, it doesn't bother me that he hasn't had a prep run. He has had uh, he's had three experiences jumping fences, including running in a point to point. So uh, yeah, no, we're looking forward to running him. And conditions for him wouldn't bother you? No, I wouldn't bother me if it dried up or, or, or it rained. To be honest, um, he's form on, on on both types of ground, so no, we're we're fairly versatile. Uh, good chance in the marsh as well with with Itchy Feet, who obviously gave you and Andrew and the team a, a brilliant day when when he won the Grade One the other day. Uh, he's towards the top of the market in in that race. How would you assess his chances? Yeah, and no, I. I'd say they've priced him accordingly. Um, he's a horse that people have loved to love to knock. Um, when Lorena didn't probably turn up in in Sandown, but at the same time, for them jumped the the second last upsides in a Grade One. I don't really understand what what, what people want horses to do, to be honest. But uh, yeah, he was a facile winner in the end, um, and uh, we're looking forward to running him. He hasn't done a lot wrong. Handicap Scandyberg in the Potemps, Strong Glance in the Martin Pipe. Two horses I picked out. Would they have chances? Scandyberg definitely would. Um, he was uh, he was a winner over course and distance round here. He's been mapped out for the race for the last six months. Um, a bit irritated, I got six pound after after winning here the last day. But uh, they are here if you want to speak to them. <laughs> um, that's the that's the way the cookie crumbles. But uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's a horse. He's, he's he's a proper running style for a for a per term. He race behind the bridle and he should come home strong. So he's a uh, he's a good each way chance. You're off to the cup final, are you, this weekend? Your beloved Villa are playing? So, yeah, cup final. Your prep for the Cheltenham Festival? Cup final Sunday, so yeah, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll be depressed leaving there, but uh, we'll go and, go and do our best shot. I want two predictions. Are you going to have a first Cheltenham Festival winner this year? 
it'd be nice to think so. It's it's where we all want winners, and listen, a young trainer like me, it's it's you want to be winning on the big stage, and I'd uh, I'd love to think I've got some some good darts to throw at the board, and uh, it'd be lovely if one of them hit the bullseye. My final question: Have you got a better chance of having Fessel winning than Aston Villa have of beating Man City on Sunday? Oh Christ, I should hope so. I've no <laughs> chance. <laughs> um, so no, fingers crossed. Well, enjoy the match and enjoy the festival. Thank you very much. Uh, Ollie Murphy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, John Joe O'Neill, who is bang in the middle. So if I get John Joe O'Neill on stage, in a few moments time we'll hear from the handicappers about the, uh, the weights, get the cut-offs for some of the big races, which I know is a key part of today. But before that, John Joe O'Neill, a legend here. How are you? Very well, on, thank you. Good, good. Um, Manella Rocco is the horse I want to start with first. He's performed admirably here in the past and he's heading to the Fox Hunters with seemingly a great chance. How is he? Yeah, he's in great form. He's had a plenty of help on the way. He had um, two runs, two wins, but the, the two fancy tosses in the race didn't really turn up on the day, so hopefully he has the same luck when he comes here. <laughs> is he in good nick? Yeah, he's in great nick. He's in great old form, really, and obviously dropping down a gear or two has helped him a little bit, but uh, yeah, he's in good form and hopefully he can stay the way he is on the way where I feel on the day in the same form. He's um, there with a sporting chance. Uh, I've mentioned your sort of affiliation with this place, but it's a special place, isn't it? You must love the build-up to the festival. Oh, it's a magic place, really. Yeah, you think you run down the bottom of the hill and you get halfway up and you're tailed off, sort of style. So it's a, it's a, it's a great race course, um, fantastic place to be, and facilities, everything are brilliant, really. So the four days are fantastic. Um, they're fairly tiring, but um, they're great fun. Uh, I saw a video just before we started of Annie Mack working. She looked in, in terrific order. She's in the marsh and also the novice handicap as well, isn't she? Do you have a decision as to where she'll run? No, I leave that up to Simon Clare and then I can blame him, so that'll be okay. But she's in grand form, yeah. She's, she's, um, she's had a nice easy trip to here, really. She's had small fields and nice um she jumps well to be fair to her she's a grand genuine mare and um if she turns up on the day the same she hopefully have a good run she's given connections a terrific day i know chris hughes colleague on itv racing former love island contestant and a friend of of the families for you uh, is involved in the ownership does he have any say in where you go john joe no he doesn't <laughs> <laughs> very sensible uh cloth cap is also i want to talk about because uh, many people think that he's a very well handicapped horse. Do you have the same assessment? Well, he's, he didn't perform great at Doncaster. Um, that was disappointing, really. Well, hopefully he'd run well there and go on from that. So he's had a few problems at home. Nothing mad serious, but just set you back, you know. Um, Richie rode him work yesterday. Thought he was sort of definitely on the way back, but a gentleman will come a bit quick for him or not. But we'll hopefully get him here and... The plan obviously would be go back to the Scottish National again. Okay. So, um, yeah, he's in good form. He likes good ground. He likes the spring weather, so hopefully he'll come right. And have you got a well handicapped horse lurking in there, John Joe, that you can reveal to us now? Yeah, um, my <laughs> <Mello Rocco. laughs> I actually thought legitimately you're going to give me that level. I thought I've done it. I've finally broken the, the matrix. Um, but are there any other horses that we need to, to touch on? Great Fields moved from Willie's to yours, owned by JP in the Grand Annual. How's he? Will he line up at Cheltenham? Well, I don't know. Uh, he wouldn't be with me if he was going to line up at Cheltenham, I think, really. But he's 155. He's half the place, really. So we'll see what he does or not. He's arrived and he's okay at the moment. So we'll, we'll see how we get on with him, really. But uh, a few in the other races, um, current, uh, um and Clark Cup, as you say, but um, they're runners, really. Okay. Excellent stuff. Thank you for the update. John Joe O'Neill. Is Pauling in the room? Yes, he is. Good stuff. Uh, Ben's got Global Citizen in the Arkle, amongst others. Uh, shake him up. Harry could be a runner for Harry Redknapp, but he's got an Imperial Cup entry as well. Uh, let's start with Global Citizen, day one, race two. Lots of people saying this is a flat track horse and he won't like Cheltenham. What do you say to them? Uh, he's never actually encountered an undulating track when he's been right, so who knows. Um, he's obviously very effective on a flat track, but um, I'll hold out the hope that he can produce the goods here as well. Uh, is he in good nick? Very. Yeah, he did a piece of work yesterday, and um, we're very happy with that. He's, again, been laid out specifically to come here fresh, because he's best fresh. Um, no injuries, no nothing to holding us up, just had to be patient, but um, I think he'll be spot on. He's got good form when he won at Kempton last time. That was on soft ground, so conditions with him, are you concerned if it is uh, testing? I would love it if it was a bit quicker than 
soft. Um, Kempton soft is different to here, yeah. um, and he's definitely a horse that prefers it when he bounces off the top. But you know, if it got really soft, I, I'd think again and maybe swerve for entry. But uh, at the moment, it's very much the plan to go. Right. Uh, is Jacob or Harry going to come here, or will he run in the Imperial? Uh, I do think, both. yeah, no, he could do both as a novice. That'd be brave. But um, <laughs> no, I think he'd probably go to the Imperial Cup. Okay. Um, by the looks of things, but he's he's a horse that's you know uh, going the right way. <laughs> Kildasart and Lebroy in the Ultima. Yeah, Kildasart. Um, I was very pleased with him on Saturday. Much more like his old self on a bit better ground. Um, I think he he'd be a real live live chance in the Ultima. And Lebroy is in the Ultima, but also I think he's out there in the betting for the Kimia. So probably one of the two as a prep for the national. And just confirming your very good bumper horse that um, was an impressive winner on debut. Your darling, is that the, the name? Um, is that going Aintree? That's not going to come here. It actually runs on Sunday at Huntingdon. Okay. Um, as a, probably a step towards Aintree. So we'll be Brilliant. Thank you very much for the update. Ben Pauling, ladies and gentlemen. Right, let's get back to the trainers. Could I ask Alan King to join me, please? <coughs> Multiple festival winning trainer who's got a number of entries. We'll go through a few of these now. Alan, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the starting point, so Royale in the champion chase? Yeah, he'll probably take his chance as long as the ground's not sort of bottomless. Um, he was a very good third net last year, but this looks an even stronger renewal, but um, nowhere else to go. So uh, He's a terrific course, isn't he? He's been such a good servant. Oh, he's been a marvellous horse. He hadn't been for Alta, he'd be a multiple grade one winner, but uh, we know our place, but he's in good order. He came out of Newbury well, and um, you know, hope and think you're on well, but you know, if he gets third or fourth, it'd be a great achievement for him. A uh, recent winner at Kempton, Who Dares Wins, has got entries in the RSA in the Marsh. Will you be running Who Dares Wins here? Uh, that's the plan, again, as long as it's not heavy. Um, the handicapper left him alone after Saturday on 147, so the Ultima could well right. come into it. He'd certainly go three miles, I think. Okay. I think he wants to step up, so the Ultima or the RSA, I've got to speak to Henry about that, yeah. but uh, we'll see. Probably quite old treat or 147. Well, it could be for a great two winner. <laughs> I like it. Uh, four in the Boodles, Group Stage, uh, Tramway to Windows, Gift, Black O3 in the Triumph. Elgin's in the County Curdle of your others? No, Elgin wouldn't run. He's, uh, he came out of Kempton in bits of the day, so we'll have to rebuild him again. Um, Harambi in the County? Don't know. Just back cantering, hit a horrible, got brought down at Newbury in the vet fair, whatever it's called. Um, just back. It might come a bit too quick for him, but we'll see. Lisp in the Grand Annual? Lisp and Ballywood in the Grand Annual. Ballywood would want decent ground, Lisp it wouldn't matter. Um, he's only a novice, but you know I've won it with a novice before. Yeah. Is there a? Is there a? I mean, I know this is a question that none of the trainers will, will ever give me a straight answer to. I'm sure. But <laughs> is there a question that you think? Is there a, a horse that you think is well handicapped now the weights have been published? Not overly, no. <laughs> They're too good at their job, really. Aren't they? Well, I'm not very good at mine, I should think. Martin disagree with you. Surprisingly, is that why there were no questions? He's right. They have got it all right. They usually have, haven't they? Yeah. Um, good stuff. Well, listen, best of luck with all your runners and uh, thank you for your time today. And if possible, Warren's got uh, Emma Tom in the Stayers, La Bag of Wild. We'll find out uh, an update from Warren on those two horses and others. Good to see you, Warren. All all right? Yeah, all good. Preparations going well? It's terrific. Good, good. Uh, Emma Tom came back with a bang last time. Uh, you must have been thrilled with that. How did he come out of the race? Yeah, he's come out well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, all good. Back on track. <laughs> you seem quite cagey today, Warren. No, <laughs> Do you think he can beat Paisley Park? I doubt it. Right. Um, <laughs> Let's cage. <laughs> we'll, we'll give it a shot. Uh, he's clearly a horse with a, a terrific engine, though, and, um, and one that's got a big future ahead, whatever happens at Cheltenham. Yeah, definitely. You know, he's, he's only disappointed us once, and that was my error rather than his, I think. And yesterday, we were, uh, sorry, last run, we were back on track. Um, he's only a six year old, there's plenty more to come, and, uh, you know, Paisley Park yeah, and, and the others are you know, going to be hard to beat. but. He's gone the right way and he's improved since Haydock, so we'll give it a shot. Terrific. Uh, where will we see La Bagawa? Um, well, she's here. She's in the Ultima around the plate. Um, we'll see nearer the time, but I've just seen the weights there. Off. She's sort of off 11-2, 11-3, so it could be quite appealing. <laughs> uh, she ran a, I thought she ran a, a decent race last time. Huh? What yeah. did you make? Yeah, no, very much so. You know, she's against gold cup horses there, and you know, I just never run her in a handicap, and it just she'd come out of that race so well. I just thought, well... She's there to be enjoyed now, you know, she's, she's been around a while and she's probably ready to, to have a go in a handicap, so we'll have a look. What other handicappers are you looking forward to running? Um, Bob Marler in the Kim Muir. Um, 
won the Edinburgh National at Mosborough last time. Um, he's improving all the time. I think he's going the right way. We won that race two years ago. Mr. Pro did have the same sort of profile. Um, Port Rush Ted in the Coral Cup, Warburton Martin Pipe, um, Encore Champ in the Novice Handicap. Exciting times. Best of luck with, with all of them. Thank you very much, Warren. Uh, we have got Harry Whittington here as well. Harry Whittington. Um, we heard Martin mentioning about Simply the Bets, who's one of Harry's runners. Rouge Vick also in there, as is St. Calvados. All three are owned by Andrew Books, who's having a, uh, a terrific season. Harry, good to see you. Uh, let's start with Simply the Bets, the horse that Martin alluded to. Um, happy with, with how his preparation's gone? Yeah, very much so. He's in good form at home, and um, yeah, we're obviously going up in class now against punching with the big boys so it's not going to be easy but uh, hopefully he can continue on an upward curve and and he'll have to improve um, so hopefully he can do that. Have you seen improvement in him at home? Uh, not necessarily no I mean he's you know he's been in great form all year but obviously the big thing was you know from Kempton to the last day was that he jumped so much better you know yeah. so I half wish that we hadn't done all that jumping with him so that um, you know, we remain the close brothers, but anyway, that's been blown out of the water, so should have left that till after the Cheltenham run. But anyway, you know, he's he was he was good the last day, and hopefully, obviously, he's going to have to improve again because you know we're going up against the, the big boys, so hopefully he can improve. But you know, it's not going to be easy. Uh, we spoke to two um, British trainers about their runners in the article. Um, Ollie about brewing up a storm. We've just spoken to Ben about Global Citizen. You've got Rouge Viff in there. Uh, and I imagine that the like Ollie and, and Ben, you, you look at this race and think, hang on, we're a big prize, but we've got a hell of a chart. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, um, you know, it's quite open this year. It's not going to be easy, obviously. It's uh, some tough opponents, but, um, you know, it, my horse is, is in good form. He's, you know, he's improved with every run. Uh, you know, he, he needed a wind off after he ran here in November. So he had that, you know, in, in the second run back, they always say it's the better run after a wind off. Mm -hmm. You know, he won the Kingmaker well, so look, I, I don't plan on doing any sort of fast work with him now. He'll just tick over until the Arcor, but he's in good form, takes his racing well, and um, yeah, hopefully he goes over the chance. How would you feel if it did come up soft on day one? Uh, he, he's got form and all on all going, but uh, he is be I think he's better on better ground as a Sageburg, so uh, yeah, I'd be happier if it dried out a bit. <laughs> I would bet. Uh, and what about St. Calvados? Will we uh, see yeah, him? yeah, no, he's he's going for the Ryanair. Um, you know, diff very different to Rouge Viv. He's better when he's fresh. Uh, you know, he's, there's no doubts about that. And uh, so, you know, after his run on New Year's Day, we decided that it would be best to come straight here. So he's in, he's in fabulous shape. Couldn't be happy with him, but obviously it's a Ryanair and it's incredibly tough. And, you know, with the likes of Aplus Tard and, you know, Min and, you know, rising on the storm, you know, it's not going to be easy, but, you know, if, 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 if it was very soft conditions, um, you know, hopefully it'll have a good chance. So you can do the, the opposite of the rain dance leading into the meeting and then the rain dance as the meeting goes on. Yeah, that's right. That, that's the way around we'll be doing it. Okay, good stuff. Best of luck with your honours. Harry Whittington. Jamie Snowden, right on the end, and then we'll speak to Kim Bailey and then we'll, we'll tuck into some lunch. Um, Jamie, good to see you. How are you? Very well, thanks. Man. Good, good. Very well, thanks. Um, a number of horses, like most of the people we're speaking to today. Fact of the matter in the cross country, the Banner King Rebel, will he run in the Super Eight? Uh, he's had a wind up on the back of the Betfair hurdle. Okay. Um, we might be tight to get to the Supreme, so yeah, we'll, we'll see how he is. Okay. Um, all right, Jack and the Potemps, you've got Petey Briggs in the Albert Bard and a few others, but let, let's just sort of go through your team overall. Who are you looking forward to running here? I suppose um, of, of the handicappers, probably Thomas McDonough might have a chance in the Martin Pipe. He, um, he, he won three um, through, through the early part of the winter. Loves soft ground. Um, disappointed in the Grade 2 River Don, but didn't stay that day. Dropped back to two and a half on the back of a wind up. He's, he, he would have a chance in the handicappers. Um, depending on what the ground does on the Friday, we've got a Drastos in the, in the uh, Grand Annual. Um, he likes slightly better ground, so obviously it depends on, on how the week pans out as to which of the two might run there. But um, yeah, they, they both have chances in, in the handicaps. I think Kiltilly Briggs is a nice horse. Um, he's in the Albert Bartlett, who's third here in the Grade 2 in December. He's in the EBF as well, um, so we'll have to decide whether he goes to the EBF or, or the Albert Bartlett. And has Factor, I mean, Factor the Matter probably doesn't need to have a pop round these, but has Factor the Matter been around here? Yeah, we came, came here yesterday actually, pop round cool. and uh, had, a, had a good time of it. Brilliant. All good with him? Yeah, really well. Um, taking on Tiger Royal off level weights is probably not the best thing in the world, so uh, he'll struggle to win that. But um, he loves it round here. Obviously, he won here in the December meeting, and I think that will set him up, and hopefully he'll get a punch down for the Banks race. 
Good stuff. Best of luck with your team as well. This view. Is Neil Mole Holland here? Where's Neil? There he is. Uh, Neil making his way over. Neil's got uh, four in the Ultima, including Finger on the Switch and the Young Master, three in the Coral Cup. Kansas City Chief in the Potemps, who ran out of Donny last time. Matt, will Kansas City Chief get in, do you think? Yeah, I think he needs about um, nine or ten to come out. So he's, he's um, 34 or something on the list. So yeah, we, he might squeeze in. He's owned by Tony Bloom. Could we see a, a Tony Bloom style gamble that we saw at um, a few of the other flat tracks in the past? Is he a, a well handicapped horse, do you think? Well, he's pretty exposed now because he finished first, second, and ran, ran out in the, in the last few runs. You know, it was only three runs ago he was running up 117 in Taunton, so he may have been better handicapped <laughs> then, but he's not as well handicapped as what he was. But, you know, he's he's pretty exposed horse. He's an 11 year old, and if you can give Tony a day out, well, that's great. But, you know, his, his form is first, second, and he looked like he was going to win. Obviously, the handicapper mm. thought he was going to win because he put him up five pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, definitely worthy of his chance. Good luck with him. Uh, of the others, pick out a, a few names that you're excited about. Yeah, and the young master for his third in the Kim Muir last year. You know, um, he's rated 144. You know, he's been around for a while, but he still finished third last year's festival. Kim Martin for his second in the Bet365 after that. He, he's Sam Willie Cohen, obviously, is a positive looking for, for the amateur race. And then, um, you know, if hopefully the grind dries up a little bit, he could be competitive. As you mentioned, finger on the switch, he's been very consistent this year. Terrific horse, isn't he? Yeah, finished second in the Sky Bet last time. He, he, won a, he won a good pot in Kempton the time before that. Really, one o'clock gets on very well with him. So, um, you know, ideally, I'd like to run him in the Ultima, but. If, if he didn't squeeze into that, um, he can possibly go up with Kim as well. Uh, and will Millie ride uh, him in the Ultima if, if he runs in the Ultima? Yeah, there's no reason why not. You know, like her, her, She's been getting a great tune out of him. She, she rode a winner in Catrick yesterday. She's a very good £7 claim and she gets a good tune out of the right. horse. Really exciting. Thank you. I, am I right thinking you've got to shoot on in a moment? Yeah, I just got to crack on. OK, cool. If anyone does want to grab Neil. Uh, Fergal O'Brien, where's Fergal? Right at the back. Oh, chatting away. Uh, just got a couple more interviews and then we can tuck into the lunch. Fergal's got um, the likes of Jarvis, Play, Quick Grab and Paint the Dream. Uh, a number of, of chances. How do you assess the team? Well, glad you think we've got chances. That's great, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. I think probably Champagne Well is probably our, our best chance. And I've uh, got two nice bumper horses. Uh, Champagne Well in the Coral Cup? Yeah, that's a bit of a race I think he'll go for. And, um, He's done nothing wrong all year. Probably got outstayed the last day in the River Don. Um, so dropping back to 2-5. I mean, his form here is pretty solid. He's been second a couple of times. He's won here, so yeah. What's Cheltenham like for you as a, a relatively local trainer with the, the team that you bring down? Um, it's always great. You know, it's a great time of year. We get a lot of people in, a lot of owners come. But it's, a, it's a, yeah, no, it's, just, it's no secret. Anymore. I just love Cheltenham, whether it's the festival or whether it's the October meeting, you know. I should quite enjoy the hundred chase meeting. It's probably the best, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's just a, it's a great, it's a great, great, great week. And I know from seeing you celebrate winners here at Cheltenham and cheering on your runners that it means an awful lot to you to have a winner here, doesn't it? Yeah, of course it does. And you know, we haven't had a festival winner. We came, we came close with Barry Dwan in the pretense a couple of years ago, and um, yeah, so it would be great to have a festival winner. Yeah, sure. Would. Best of luck with all your runners, Fergal O'Brien, ladies and gentlemen. Please. If we could welcome the great man to the stage, he's won the Champion Hurdle, the Gold Cup, the Grand National. The Sky Bet Supreme with the Rainbow Hunters, some huge races with some great horses. Kim Daly, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so uh, much, <laughs> um, how, how much are you looking forward to, to being back in the Cheltenham Winners Enclosure, Kim? Was it with your horse? Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be nice if it was your horse, wouldn't it? Yeah. Two for gold. Um, uh, yeah, well, it'd be great to be back here. And it's the first place where you hope we all are going to be here. Mm. Do you, do you think you've got a team that will take you into the winners' enclosure this this year? I certainly got the best team we've had here for a long time. I've got five horses of which you know, I wouldn't swap any of them. They're all they're all in good form. They all look well. They've been praying for the race, so fingers crossed they all get here in one piece. Okay, let's go through them. Then vindication uh, in the Ultima. Yeah, he runs in the Ultima. He worked this morning. Delighted with him. Um, he's had a, well, he's only run once this season, and that's um, um, not going to do him any harm. Really, he hasn't been chundering around on heavy ground all winter, so. Um, he comes in really good form. You've always thought the world of this horse, haven't you? Well, he's won seven out of his nine, and uh, you know he got beat at Sandown, and we, we were not hugely happy after he got beaten. And um, you know, Jeffy or so, and, and lost in translation, the two horses that beat him. So, hindsight, it was a it was a very good race. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's he's a lovely horse. 
Uh, what about uh, Imperial Law in the North, Northern Trust? Is that the route you're going no. with that one? Um, he worked with Indication this morning. Um, he's only had the three runs over fences. Two of them have been here, so he's got experience around the race course. Um, he comes here with a very live chance. How did he work? Yeah, I'm very happy with him. I mean, Vindication worked better than him, but he would do so. <laughs> um, but uh, no, he's, he's, uh, he's um, you know, it, it, the experience he got here last time was hugely important because he's, he had virtually had a walkover first time out of Fakenham and, and there were only four runners when he came here the second time. So when he ran here in January, at least there were 11 runs, 12 runners. So he had, a, he had a race amongst other horses, which was the important thing. And against good horses as well, some proper horses he's, he's met this year. Absolutely. And, it, you know, he had to come here to get a handicap um, and be qualified to run the handicap. So therefore, that was his third run. So that was good. Uh, new Tide, what's the route you're going down with New Tide? He will go for the National Home Chase. Um, and, um, 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 <laughs> What have you got on you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make the obvious joke here, unfortunately. But, uh, um, yeah, he goes, he goes to the National Hunt Chase, and uh, we'll have to see who rides him. It's just me. What is that? That is you. No one else has that. Um, two for gold. Are you going to run two for gold at Cheltenham? Well, um, your main owners are coming to see me on Monday. I'm surprised you're not coming as well to have the busy time of year for me. Well, final discussions will be held on Monday. I, I, I think that the overall decision will probably be yes. Um, uh, we're going to drop him back in trip with two, two mark, two and a half, and go to the race of Dana one, two or three years ago. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to make this very quick because this is really weird. Esquadra Romy in the Martin Pipe. He goes to the Martin Pipe. Again, he worked this morning, and Chester Williams schooled him, and he arrived. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Right, let's wrap this up because that is so 